Christ the Redeemer Catholic Church in Thibodeau, Louisiana welcomes you to our celebration of the 20th Sunday of Ordinary Time, August the 16th, 2015. This is Father Mark. Good morning. And this morning, we're going to have a conversation about conversation. Conversation about God and love and His will in the midst of whether it's transgender issues, whether it's same-sex marriage, whether it's same-sex attraction, whether it's contraception or abortion, or any of the hot topic issues of late, we all know people who are, are personally affected by the issues themselves. And it can be very difficult to have conversation with people who are personally affected because in some way there is an air in the air for us to just kind of quote unquote all get along. And yet we know that God calls us to love and we know that that's God's will. And so it just seems that with issues that are contrary to the Bible, it can be difficult for us to know what is God's will in those particular relationships and how do we love them. And we want to. We're emotionally connected to people who are struggling with some of these issues. And if it is God's will that we love them, then how do we do that? That can be a challenge. Challenge number one, how do we love people who are personally affected by some of the issues that, at least as we glance at them, are contrary to what the scriptures tell us, to what God has revealed to us, to what the church teaches. Here, here's the second challenge. A lot of these issues are pretty complex. Um, people ask me often, um, why does the church teach what she teaches about, for example, same-sex attraction? Oftentimes people ask me, uh, didn't God make them that way? Or why would God um, create someone um, who has a homosexual orientation? And I think there's a presumption there that because a person has felt this way, quote unquote, their whole life, that, that they're born this way, that God made them this way. I, just, just that, just same-sex attraction, that could be a very complex issue that requires a lot of time to kind of um, adequately and thoroughly and authentically speak to. But these issues are pretty complex, and because the issues are complex, it can be a challenge to have conversation with people about any of them, from same-sex attraction to transgender to even abortion or divorce and annulments and everything in between. So because the issues are complex, there can be a challenge. Challenge number three, it can be difficult in general to know what God's calling you to, um, it can be difficult to hear God's voice. It can be difficult to know of all the voices that you hear inside your heart, which ones are God's and perhaps which ones are just coming from you. So just in general, knowing God's will, it can be kind of challenging in life. Now, maybe you connect with those challenges. And my question is, what if God today spoke to us about that? Like what if God could speak to you right now today about those three challenges in such a way that at least you had some direction around His will and how to love people. See, the good news is always good and it's always new. And St. Paul spoke to some of the very same things that we're talking about today. There's nothing new under the sun. A lot of times we find ourselves kind of all hot and bothered and kind of thrown around by some of the contemporary issues, but... You know, the more that we look at the scriptures and study the saints and understand God over the ages, there's good news. And St. Paul, in his letter to the Ephesians, actually gives us some direction today. Because the readings today actually talk about God's will. Last week we were in Ephesians chapter 4. Today we are in Ephesians chapter 5. And in today's second reading, in Ephesians 5, verse 15 and 17, St. Paul says this, and I quote, Watch carefully how you live. Not as foolish persons, but as wise, making the most of the opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not continue in ignorance, but try to understand what is the will of the Lord. End quote. How about that? St. Paul telling us to watch carefully how we are to live. He says we should live with wisdom. And living with wisdom, he says, 
we should understand what is the will of God. St. Paul today asks us to try to understand what is the will of God. And if, if St. Paul were here today, I think he'd go right after those three challenges. How is it that we're supposed to love people if loving our neighbor is God's will? Then how do we love them in the midst of the challenges that we just talked about? So let's do this. Let's look at each challenge individually and see what St. Paul and the Word of God would say to each of those. Number one, the first response to the first challenge. None of these issues are, are simple. They're, they're, they're complex. So what would St. Paul say to that first challenge? Well, well first of all... Um, Complexity is not the litmus test for truth. <laughs> in other words, I feel like, as I said last week, because we've lost the ability to reason, we've lost the ability to have an intellectual conversation, to think our way through things, whenever we hit a complex issue, a lot of times we just toss our hands in the air and we say, well, that just must be the way people were born, or that must just be the way that, that God wants it to happen. And, and, and complexity isn't the litmus test for truth. Wisdom is. The scriptures are. And so, St. Paul says to us today in the, first, in the second reading, he says, do not continue in, in ignorance, but try to understand. Just because things are complex doesn't mean that we, we shut down. Let me give you a concrete example. I, I um, have somebody very dear in my life who I love uh, dearly who struggles with alcoholism. And I think we probably all know somebody who He probably struggles with alcoholism. And, uh, you know, two years ago, I would have probably said very naively, um, maybe some of the things that you've heard other people say about alcoholism. Why don't you just stop drinking or they don't have willpower or whatever it is. As, 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 As I, in relationship with this person, um, watch them take a a turn in their life and, and, and work hard for sobriety, I myself realize that alcoholism is a complex issue. There's a combination of psychological as well as physiological conditions. There's a combination of, um, of, of the will that needs to be there as well as just the disease itself. Alcoholism is not as simple as just buckling up and, and white knuckling your way through it. Alcoholism is a complex situation in somebody's life. And because I loved the person who wanted sobriety, I determined that I would learn about alcoholism even if it was complex. So here's the thing. I'm not going to pretend today that these issues aren't complex. Transgender issues are not simple. They are complex. Same-sex attraction, it is complex. Um, Dealing with all things of abortion, divorce, annulments, those are complex issues. But here's the thing. The game has changed. The the toothpaste is out the tube. It ain't going back. Our nation is not going back to simple. Our nation, the culture, is only going to get more complex. So here's the thing. If you and I are going to stay committed to Christ in our relationship, then we have to make choices to learn about what God says about these complex issues. One of two things is going to happen. I promise you this. Either our opinions are going to change because the culture is going to influence in in that direction, or we are going to make the choice to learn about what God says to us in these days. But there's only two options. You're never idle in the spiritual life. You're either moving forward or we're moving backwards. And here's the thing. Because of the weight, because of the complexity of these issues, we're either going to form we're going to form our conscience and our mind and learn, or we're going to be formed by the culture. And we're going to be standing on the sidelines five years from now, and we're going to be agreeing with the culture, saying things like, oh, well, God must have made them that way, or, or I can't believe the church is judging people. Okay, so... We can't stand on the sideline anymore. St. Paul says to us today, do not continue in ignorance, but try to understand. And, And so I am urging you on behalf of God, learn more about your faith. 
I mentioned to you last week that I'll, I'm going to start teaching in September on Tuesday nights. What does the church teach about some of these things? And I, and I really urge you uh, to show up for those, those nights and to learn more about the faith. So St. Paul's response to the first challenge about complexity, he would say to us, do not continue in ignorance, but try to understand. Now, here's his second response to the second challenge. And here's the challenge. Because of the depth of how difficult these issues are, a lot of times people say, well, doesn't God want us to love? Isn't it God's will that we love them? Well, today in the second reading from Ephesians 5.15, he says, be careful how you live. But he also says, you can't just take a line of scripture and, and pull it out and isolate it all by itself. It's like St. Paul's, he, he wrote the entire letter to the Ephesians. And, and chapter 4 precedes chapter 5. And chapter 6 follows chapter 5. And, 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 and right before today's second reading, in chapter 5, in verse 1, St. Paul says, Be imitators of God and live in love as Christ loves us and handed himself over to us as a sacrificial offering to God. He also says, right before today's second reading, let no one deceive you with empty arguments. For you were once in darkness and now you are in the light of the Lord. So live in the light. For light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. So here's the thing. St. Paul is urging us to love, but to love like Christ loves. See, love has a name, and the name is Jesus Christ. Love is a person, and it is Jesus Christ. So here's the thing. You can call it what you want, but if love doesn't lead to Jesus, then, then uh, don't call it love. So, so here's the, the conversation stopper, right? People say all the time, well, well, isn't it God's will that we just love one another? And my response to that directly would be this. It is God's will that every person grow in their relationship with Jesus Christ. And if we are in relationship with Jesus Christ, our only posture is surrender to him. See, that's why last week we talked about, do we believe that he is who he says he is? And if we're in relationship with Jesus Christ, and if he is who he says he is, then our only response is surrender. So yes, when people ask the question, isn't it God's will that we love one another? The answer is yes. However, it is God's will that we love one another in Christ, that we bring people to Christ. Now, here's the good news. God always meets us where we are. But here's the good news. God never leaves us there. And so there might be lots of people in your life who struggle with lots of different issues, and they just want you to love them. Well, you're only loving them if we're walking with them toward love itself, which is Jesus Christ. Now, that doesn't mean that we, we, we cast stones. It doesn't mean that we point fingers. It means that we walk with people, not ahead of people, walking with people, and we're always bringing them to God. In fact, I, I, often, I often tell people that if you've got somebody who's struggling with any form of morality, then maybe the best thing to do is not even talk about that. Just talk to them about God. Bring them into a relationship with God. And if they are in a relationship with the person of Jesus Christ, it will always lead to freedom, to truth, and to surrender. So St. Paul's response to our second challenge about doesn't God want me to love them, St. Paul would say yes, but he would say, let no one deceive you with empty arguments. And he would say to lead them to the person of Jesus Christ. Third challenge is that it can just be difficult for us to know what God's will is. Huh? And this is what St. Paul would say. In Ephesians 5, 17, he says, try to understand what is the will of the Lord. But he also says to us, in the chapter prior to that, Ephesians 4, 17, he says, I, I declare and testify in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do. In other words, you want to know what God's will is? God's will for you is about today, not just about tomorrow. You know, we often get hooked up with God's will. What does God want me to do? And we're looking at the future. And a lot of times God's response is, hey, let's talk about what you're doing today. Today. 
let me give you a concrete example. We'll go back to what I was sharing earlier. You know, I remember distinctly that when I was uh, trying to love a, a person in my life who was struggling with alcohol addiction, and I was trying to ask God, what do you want me to do? What's your will? And, and God's response was, go to the house and take all the liquor out the house. <laughs> in other words, hey, deal with practical wisdom. God's will is, is often going to start in the present moment. And if we are living like the Gentiles, St. Paul would say, stop. In other words, if we're living like unbelievers, stop. You want to know what God's will is? Look at our hearts. And if there's anything in our life that needs to be brought to the light, let's do that today. In other words, knowing God's will, hearing God's voice isn't rocket science. It's not that God has stopped speaking. It's that a lot of times in our heart, there's just too much plugging up our ears. If we have blocks in our life, the call is for us to, is to remove the blocks and then you will know God's will. So, yeah, it can be tough. There is a challenge knowing God's will. But a lot of times it's not because God is not speaking. It's because our ears can't hear. So I'm going to give us all some homework. And I want us to do one thing this week. Just do this one thing. St. Paul would urge us to do this. And that is, look in your heart this week and ask yourself, is there anything in your life, any habit, practice, area, sin, whatever it is, small or big, is there anything in your life that's preventing you from hearing God? Could be the pace you live. It could be the shame of the past. It could be a lack of prioritizing time, or it could be um, forcing or wanting God to say a particular thing when you hear Him. But just one thing this week, all I want you to do is ask God if there's anything preventing you from hearing His voice. And now imagine if you did that. Imagine if instead of trying to fix the world, imagine if you just did one thing this week and imagine if God spoke to you about that and imagine if you brought that to him into the light and imagine in your life if you were able to hear God speak to you as one man speaks to another. Imagine what your life might look like. And if we were all listening to God rather than other voices, imagine that we actually might know each other and and, and hear each other. Imagine if the people in your life who you love the most were hearing God. Imagine if your family was hearing God. Imagine if our church parish, instead of focusing on all the things that we can get turned up around sometimes, imagine if we all focused on one thing and that was God's will and we were all hearing God together. Imagine what that might look like. Imagine if you could hear God like St. Paul did. And if you were as on fire as St. Paul was. Imagine if the next time you were in conversation and somebody said, isn't it God's will that we just love each other? Imagine if you actually knew what to say. Imagine. St. Paul says to us today, watch carefully how you are to live and try to understand what is the will of God. Do you want to know God's will? choice is ours this week. This week, one thing, a lot's at stake. Do you want to do it? Let's take steps together. Let's ask God to show us together what we can do to follow him so that you and your life might know God's will. God bless you.